What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house. I had an insanely amazing night last night. Somehow, Triff Gaming became my drunk spiritual guide into the dueling world, and today only gets crazier. I had seen some trademarks filed for in the past, but this exceeds all expectations as China finally officially, after 20 years, is getting Yu-Gi-Oh! They've had to do their own unofficial, official kind of thing, and we'll get into the history of their organized play that I paid attention to in the past that honestly looks freaking amazing for what they had to work with in the CNC and them getting, you know, 500 plus people and increasing their organized play. But this comes from Game King Card Game, and in this uh, actual capacity, this poorly translated, you know, Google translated document, that should mean Yu-Gi-Oh! when we say that in this article. On April 16th, 2020, Shanghai Yingdai Film and Television Culture Co. Limited was officially authorized by Konami and will become an official agent to launch a series of Yu-Gi-Oh! official card game products for the market. As a classic trading card game, Game King OCG has been popular, and that means Yu-Gi-Oh!, in more than 75 countries and regions since the advent of Game King Card Game in 1999. Now, the door of Game King Card World will officially open to us. Let us greet the opening of this game together. My round! Draw cards! I think that's the my turn draw cards. It's a very kind of famous merch line over in Japan. It's my turn draw. Uh, let's bring a smile with a duel together. Mr. Gao Kiao, sorry if I'm murdering that, general manager of Clean Digital Entertainment Co. Limited addresses the Chinese players. So to break down the ifs and maybes and I don't knows, it seems like they're going to be starting with Rise of the Duelist as their first official product. They're showing off past products from Japan and then they lead forward within the video. Video. As I also understand it, they will be following the OCG ban list. I do not currently know how they're going to get back through past products. They will have YCSs when things return back to normal, and they'll be able to have events over there on that level. I don't think they're allowed to play TCG cards period, similar to Japan. I don't know about other OCG cards, and I'm pretty sure they're going to not be able to use other OCG cards. So we're looking at probably Mandarin Yu-Gi-Oh cards for the first time. Now, the history of China and their unofficial organized play is that basically fans had to come together and put this together, but it was still very popular over here. This is thanks to Road of the King. You can see that the eighth China National Championship, CNC, and Dual City were held on the 18th, 19th of August uh, over in China, and it had 536 participants, while the other, Dual City, had 139. So they held two events together here. Despite the lack of official distributor and support, Yu-Gi-Oh! has pro proliferated in mainland China while participating numbers that surpass many Asia regions, excluding Japan. You know, those insane YCS is over there. Now I expect to see record-breaking attendance, the biggest YCSs of all time, and some really crazy things happen. The China National Championship is the most anticipated annual tournament in mainland China that sees players from all over the country traveling over to compete, and it continues to grow strong. The 8th CNC saw an increase from 473 to 5th, 536. Sorry, just woke up still a little bit uh, wonky from Drunk Stream. The 8th CNC had 9 rounds of Swiss for Day 1 and cut to Top 64. These 64 players will continue into Day 2 in a single elimination until the champion is crowned. For players that failed to make Day 2, they would participate in the Dual City. So basically, uh, this gigantic side event that's awesome. Dual City 2018 is a year-long tournament series held across various cities in China that accumulates into the Dual City 2018 Championship, winning the SP2 would award the champion with an invitation to next year's dual city championship 2018 and when you look through here it's pretty darn awesome they get this uh art where you have ghost ogre and uh veiler and hornet drones and i really like this playmat of ray it's pretty crazy she's like changing into the other mech forms and just popping off and this was obviously sky striker format they had to put the side events in this other room it it's players 
coming together and creating this event for the players because nothing else could be done for Yu-Gi-Oh! in China. Now, they are going to have official tournaments. Now, we are going to see things get crazy and it's going to be awesome i personally look forward to seeing the rarities they get access to versus the ocg and tcg the cost of their product as many people are wondering down here and also you see key information Simu simultaneous launch with japanese versions so they're going to be getting products at the same time no clue how they're going to be catching up there may be a simplified chinese version of the game in the future as well so maybe they're talking about rush duels i'm not entirely sure about what they're going on with here but it's pretty insane that it took this long. That you had that barrier set up to where they couldn't enjoy the game that we weren't enjoying. And they had to make it this way in order to do so. But they were still able to come together. And actually what I really like in one of these pictures, you see the Origins Archfiend Eccentric official playmat. So they're even getting things over from America. They're buying playmats from us and getting them over. They're like that big of fans in terms of I want to play this game. I want things that I can't have here, and I want to be able to do it over here. So you have them looking at the TCG, you have them looking at the OCG, and they're just trying to, you know, have fun with the game. I get OCG mats all the time, you know? The 8th CNC main event and Dual City 2018 SP2 were held in a beautiful ballroom, which it really is, that's nice. On the first floor of the hotel, tension in the room ran high towards the last few rounds of Swiss, as any mistakes at this point would cost their chances of making day two. Top 64. And and you also see uh, a what WeChat mini program is used for the tournament system. Players are registered for the tournament in the mini app. And subsequently, pairing standings and reporting of the match results were all done within the app itself. This was convenient and efficient as the table numbers were shown directly for each individual for Swiss Round 1, Table 39, etc. Eliminating the need for crowding around the wall to look at the table numbers and pairings. They got their own trophies. They made extra playments. I really want some of these, by the way. You have Yugi and Slifer and Kaiba and obelisk almost in jojo-esque fan art fashion but this is like all they had this is what was official they made sleeves and then they had other official products as prizing as well the CNC tournament organizers have commissioned several artworks for the sleeves and playmats. The CNC entry sleeves, entry playmat, and top 64 playmats feature Ray, uh, Sky Striker Ace Ray with various Easter eggs in the Hornet drones. They're drawn by Frosty CO, famous for Maiden with Eyes of Blue artwork. I actually haven't seen this. This could be Manka TOS. Let me let me check this out real quick. Uh, but I do look forward to it. So this is oh yeah, this is beautiful. I have seen this before. This is awesome. So, we also see they are renowned. Uh, they, you also have the God Obelisk and Slifer playmats. They're drawn renowned for the illustration of Kowloon Kessler summoning the Trishula Dragon Ice Barrier against Fudo. I think I know which one this is too. This is really awesome art. So, they're giving credit directly to the artist. Yes, this is awesome. I love this picture. You see the uh, Infernities popping off against Yusei. So, two very, very nice and amazing artists are who they got to go ahead and work on their playmats and they got them together. I actually didn't know this. I, I need to do more reading. I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player who doesn't read enough. Metagame breakdowns were there. We got to see what both tournaments ended up turning out with. And it's it's pretty awesome to see all of this come together and what they put together. Like they had to make these from scratch. The what those backdrops they have, they had to pay for those out of pocket. They had to make this championship. And usually tournaments are a loss. Hands down, you're renting a ballroom. You saw how nice the ballroom was. You're not selling that much product unless you're a vendor. Vendors make the most money, and Konami doesn't even charge them. So you have vendors in the room, and it's just not a venture that typically pans out well for the tournament organizer. And now you're going to have that on Konami's coin slash the company's coin that's hosting and selling cards over there, and you're going to get much bigger events People will come out for it, and it's going to be awesome. Sky Striker is the most popular choice in the 8th CNC, but the top four was dominated by Gluki and the 8th CNC championship going 15-0 and 0 undefeated. Oh, the champion. The mainland Chinese players have a strong understanding of the metagame and have been developing their own strategies prior to the CNC. Dark Warrior Link. So basically, it's explaining what the metagame was back then, but how it actually like outperformed what people thought would end up winning and how it went. I love 
how everything was here and oh yeah there's also video feature matches if you'd like to check this out i will i will link this road of the king uh link down below and i will also go ahead and link this uh i believe it's weibo i don't know i i'm sorry i'm new to chinese culture in a lot of senses in terms of pronunciations and that but i'll go ahead and link this down below too for those of you who are like source 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 uh this is historic hands down it's historic this is a great moment for Yu-Gi-Oh. i'm very excited to see what comes forward i'll be a customer of some of their products hopefully in the future myself i've never dealt with shipping directly from china but i have a friend who taught there for a while so maybe i'll be able to get that you know going and seeing what i can do with him this this is excellent thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the conversation i'm gonna have a wild wild market watch for you guys later today